When I need a dose of positivity in my life, one of my favorite places to go on the internet is what I like to call wholesome old people YouTube. From an old timer dishing out sage life advice to a sweet grandmother showcasing great depression recipes to feature man just living his best life. Hello watermelon students, today I'll be doing a tutorial on the correct way to eat a watermelon as you can see right here. YouTube's most senior creators are a reprieve from the often cynical nature of the online world. But spend enough time on the web and you'll find that even the most wholesome of content creators can hold dark secrets. Disturbing dealings from one's past tend to become exposed in time as an online entertainer, and elderly creators are no exception to this rule. From a 77-year-old man sent to prison for his YouTube channel, to a seemingly pure senior citizen singer ending up as a registered offender, these are the disturbing stories of YouTube's criminal elders. I want to give a big shout out to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes for anyone who wants to learn a new skill or take a creative side hustle to the next level. As a YouTuber who still edits most of his own videos, Skillshare has proved invaluable in upping my game over the years. Jordy Vandeput's Adobe After Effects for Beginners has really been helpful lately. I've been putting off learning After Effects for far too long, but thanks to Skillshare, Wavy Web Surf videos now have these slick looking scene transitions. Oh yeah, that's crispy, that's Sunny V2 editing, baby. So what are you waiting for? Join the Skillshare community today. The first 1,000 people to click my link in the description get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Start exploring your creativity today. Our first story involves an old retiree becoming a YouTube star in his later years. His channel was considered one of the most wholesome corners of YouTube, a place that brought people hope in the midst of the pandemic. But little did the internet know, this man was keeping a dirty secret. <laughs> yeah, he's my baby. A big baby, but he's a baby. Meet Plasma Master Don. This retired plasma burner joined YouTube in 2012. He posted a variety of content from him walking around local parks and just him filming himself in his house. Oh, okay, you're gonna mark your territory. I got news for you, this isn't your territory. That is my webcam, Logitech uh, webcam. There's another picture of, uh, that is uh, Seth Green, which he also signed. But what really cemented Don as this lovable old goof were the rap songs he created under his alter ego, Grandpa Dope. 68 years, still as humble as ever, killing the beat of passion, no matter what the weather. Age is just a number, nothing in this world will stop my hunger. Ask what was on TV, watch Chris Angel mind free. Lights turn down low. In addition to his grandpa dope tracks, Don also did cover songs, which he would often do pop covers or covers of children's songs like Rubber Ducky from Sesame Street. So thanks to these grandpa dope rap songs and the covers that he performed, Don was able to get a little fan base going. He had a niche following dedicated at that. Time and time again, folks were tuning in to watch the silly ass antics of this old guy. Here we go, Niners, here we go. San Fran's going to the Super Bowl. Oh yeah. And it really was heartwarming to see just how grateful it seemed Don was for his viewers. It seemed like he really cared about his fans. Don often shouted out his viewers in videos and made slideshows which revealed the names and faces of his newest subscribers. On numerous occasions, Don asked his viewers to private message him their full name and address so that he could mail them signed autographs of himself. Um, this is the picture that you'll get. Here's what you gotta do. Just leave your name and full address in a private message to me here on um, YouTube and I'll mail you one. Don's engagement with his fans even extended to him getting in private Skype calls with them and performing rap songs. Alex, my friend from the UK, 
He's okay. Talk to him on Skype almost every day. He's a cool guy. Likes to rap. Don liked to maintain a close relationship with his fans. He would often share details of his personal life with these fans, explaining on many occasions that he was dealing with a long-term medical issue that would sometimes land him in the hospital. Excuse me. Um, I just got released from the hospital today. And as you can see, I'm wearing oxygen. All things considered, it seemed like the guy didn't have the greatest life and this was something that was keeping him going. It was hard not to feel bad for him. YouTube was all this man had, the only thing bringing him joy in life. And one could only imagine the joy Don felt in 2020 when an unexpected blessing was granted to him and his channel by the YouTube algorithm. In the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic lockdowns, the world really needed a dose of positivity and, well, Plasma Master Don had it in great supply. During the lockdown, several of Don's musical covers ended up going viral, notably his Joji Slow Dancing in the Dark cover, which topped over 2.4 million views. People saw Don's channel as this sort of symbolic message, saying that no matter who you are, how old you are, whatever, you can still make a name on YouTube and enjoy yourself, I guess. What was once a small channel with less than a thousand subscribers now became a massive channel with over 400,000 subscribers, and folks felt like Don deserved these clicks. A brief foray into his comment sections reveals how much the YouTube community treasured this seemingly wholesome man at the time. Protect him at all costs, they said. But unfortunately, this reverence of Plasma Master Don would be short-lived, as the added attention to Don's channel brought newfound scrutiny and the exposure of a disturbing secret. On October 10th of 2020, a thread would be posted to the Morbid Reality subreddit stating the following. Sweetest elderly cover artist Plasma Master Don is actually a recently registered sex offender. And the proof? Attached were two images, one showing Don's YouTube channel with a few thumbnails of his face, and the second image being from the Ohio Sex Offender Registry. The offender's mugshot was of a curiously familiar looking man named Donzel Edward Owens. The registry claimed that the man was guilty of sexual imposition, a misdemeanor crime in the state of Ohio that involves one making unwanted sexual contact with another individual. The entry goes on to state that Donzel Owens' victim was a juvenile white male. Even more disturbingly, the act was committed in April of 2019. So if this very familiar looking man was in fact Plasma Master Don, that would mean that Don had committed a sex crime while being praised as the innocent sweet grandpa of the internet. <laughs> News reports from the time provide additional context to the crime committed by this Donzel Edwards individual. It states that the man was charged with, quote, sexual imposition for allegedly grabbing another male's genitals on Sunday. Another report from August of 2019 details his sentencing. Quote, the man was fined $200, credited with a day in jail, and required 30 hours of community service for sexual imposition for grabbing another man's genitals with his hand on April 9th. So this Reddit exposed post was quite the bit of breaking news, to say the least. Folks held out hope that Plasma Master Don had an evil twin look-alike that was responsible for these crimes, but unfortunately the sex offender registry page had more information that pretty much made it clear that Plasma Master Don and Donzel Owens were the same guy. In many Plasma Master Don videos, he attributes himself to having this Donzel Owens Jr. name. So that's a big red flag by itself. Additionally, the sex offender registry lists the offender's date of birth as September 10th of 1947. Well, in the about section of Plasma Master Don's channel, one finds the exact same birth date. And finally, the registry lists the man's vehicle as being a white 2005 Buick Century. Don has a video showcasing a white Buick Century that looks to be just about that year. Good morning, YouTube. 
I've had a few requests on uh, making a video of my car. This is a 2005 Buick Century Custom. Plasma Master Don and convicted sex offender Donzel Edward Owens Jr. were one in the same. Sounds like someone could use a cookie. Have a cookie, bro. Calm yourself. Chocolate chip and peanut butter. Yep, this innocent grandpa of YouTube had allegedly groped another male's genitals without consent, all while performing covers of children's songs, soliciting viewers' full names and addresses to send them autographs, and Skyping with young men who were fans of his. Alex, my friend from the UK, he's okay. Talk to him on Skype almost every day. Just leave your name and full address in a private message to me here, YouTube subscribers have visited me. You're welcome to visit if you want to. Killing the beat of passion, no matter what the weather. Age is just a number, age is just a number, age is just a number. <laughs> yeah, knowing his crime, it really changes the way you view his older content. With Don's secret now known by the internet, people started swarming his comment sections, shaming him and warning new viewers of his offender status. Interestingly, while in these comment sections, users stumbled across this comment, quote, I wish he was my grandpa. I wouldn't mind the odd touching. This comment was favorited by Don himself. Dude was a total pervert. Have a cookie, bro. Calm yourself. While there was nothing in the terms of Don's probation that legally prohibited him from operating a YouTube channel, it was reasonable for the YouTube community to be outraged by his presence considering how recently he had sexually imposed upon another individual. The thought was that his channel was dangerous because it could potentially be used to lure in another victim. Hell, I mean, he had asked for people's names and addresses in the past. So how does Don respond to all this? Well, he never really officially does. Days after the Reddit post was shared, Don would upload a video explaining that his declining health was causing him to lose his voice and he would likely be shutting down the channel in the near future. This was viewed by many as a deflectionary tactic for him to basically fall off the face of the earth without having to explain himself to his viewers. Don would upload videos for several more months until November of 2020 after which he would disappear from YouTube forever, never once discussing his sexual imposition conviction on his channel. It turns out though, Don's claim that health problems were the reason for him needing to leave YouTube, those claims weren't completely untrue. As just a month after leaving YouTube, on December 21st of 2020, Donzel Edward Owens Jr., aka Plasma Master Don, passed away at Salem Hospital in Salem, Ohio at the age of 73. His obituary attributes his passing to a quote, lengthy illness. It's really hard to describe this story other than it being dark and depressing. It's unsettling in the sense that such a seemingly innocuous figure was able to fool everyone to such an extent. And on the other hand, I find it sad that the last days of this man's life were filled with him watching his YouTube channel crumble and people reminding him of his criminal past. And speaking of his crime, the sexual imposition thing, I want to briefly note here that it's not exactly known what age his victim was. I've heard many people on YouTube say that his victim was quote unquote a little boy. The actual age of the victim is not publicly available. While the sex offender registry for Ohio did at one point state that his victim was a juvenile, publicly available court documents regarding Don's criminal case do not make such a distinction as far as the victim's actual age. That registry entry is the only place that I've been able to find that says the victim was a juvenile. So. Just keep that in mind. Regardless of what age his victim was, Don's actions were repulsive and his entire YouTube persona essentially a facade. From wholesome grandpa of the internet to convicted sexual imposer, that was the case of Plasma Master Don. Our next case of an elderly creator with a dark past is a bit of a moral conundrum. An honestly tragic series of events that led to prison time and heartbroken fans. And they're going inside your ears and inside your head and then they're inside your eyes trying to get inside but your eyes are shut and they want to eat and sleep just like you. You know why she's doing this? Do you know why she's doing this? 
this precious little dog was taken away from her mother when, before she had a chance to suckle. The belly that this dog is suckling on belongs to old school YouTube content creator Edward Muscari, aka Ederum. Ed created his YouTube channel all the way back in September of 2006 and almost immediately garnered viral attention due to his bizarre looks and uncanny videos. <laughs> While some of Ed's videos were a bit creepy, a lot of his content was just silly and downright wholesome at times. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the schnoz. I'd like to pass along a very interesting way to say the word nuclear. Now, new honey, don't bite my... I just fixed my hair. No, no precious. Yes, you've got to brush your dog, especially in the springtime because their hair really comes out. That's a lot of fur. <laughs> I think I'll put it in a pillowcase and I'll have a nice soft pillow. Brush your dogs. They got a lot of fur coming off in the springtime, okay? Yeah, it's a good boy. Yes, it is. Tad's little buddy. Ed was just an old man who liked playing with his dogs. <laughs> you precious animal showing off his prized red beetle. There it is, ladies and gentlemen, my little beetle. And most importantly, making people laugh. Oh, 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 oh. <sighs> Toilet brush is the best back scratcher ever. Oh, oh. Many of Ed's early videos involve him showcasing his radio voice, and it actually turns out that Ed had a storied history in radio and television media, working in the industry throughout the 70s and 80s. Now, here's your weeknight host on All Night Live, Ed Muscari. We're gonna do it over again so we get it right. The reason we said it's Friday is because we wanna start all over again. We had a bad weekend. Can we do that? <laughs> Here's tonight's Twilight Zone. Known as Uncle Ed in the business, he was most notable for being the charismatically cool host of Uncle Ed's All Night Live. The show aired alongside late night syndicated programming in Kansas City. Uncle Ed was a rising star in television and was well liked in the industry. But unfortunately, his career and reputation would be tarnished thanks to a crime committed in 1986. In 86, Edward committed sexual battery on a 14-year-old boy in Orlando, Florida. He would ultimately plead no contest to the charges and was convicted. He was sentenced to prison for 18 months and was given 10 years of probation. I would never sexually offend again, but we can't help but sin. We're all human beings. Edward Muscari. <laughs> So 20 years after this incident, Ed creates his YouTube channel and becomes beloved by the YouTube community. Naturally, Ed doesn't disclose that he's a registered sex offender to these viewers, nor does his newfound audience remember the 86 incident, as you would have had to have been familiar with his prior work and likely in the industry to even know about it. And keep in mind, Ed doesn't display his full name on his YouTube channel, it's just Ederim, that's what people knew him as. His history was something that he kept on the hush-hush. The 86 incident was a regrettable mistake from the past, but it happened. And with that said, Ed would do his best to keep this old blunder out of the public light, likely fearing that it would negatively affect his YouTube prospects. And this wasn't the only time in Ed's life that he tried to hide his past from the public. One thing not known by many on the internet is that Ed was somewhat of a troublesome individual in the eyes of the Florida courts. Florida is where Ed spent most of his time living since his conviction in 86. This contentious relationship with the courts wasn't because he re-offended or anything, it's because he attempted to undermine the sex offender registry. This generally manifested in Ed not disclosing to the courts when he changed addresses. And this is important because when you're a convicted offender, the court and the public is supposed to know where you're at. In 1998, Ed was given extra probation time for ducking the registry, and this would happen again. In 2000, 
In 2006, around the time of Ed starting his YouTube channel, he would make an unauthorized move from the state of Florida to the state of South Carolina. It's not exactly known why Ed chose South Carolina, but his reason for wanting to leave Florida was that he was reportedly facing repeated harassment from his neighbors due to him being in the sex offender registry. After arriving in South Carolina, Ed would continue uploading content to his loving and loyal fan base. He would go on to become a YouTube legend, and he would receive enormous praise for his unique videos and cheerful persona. As a viewer of his content, it was genuinely heartwarming to see the old man enjoying himself, doing what he loved, entertaining people. You probably noticed my shirt, didn't you? <laughs> Ah, uh, yes. This is what life is all about. Cool shirts. One of the pleasures of living. <laughs> uh. But Ed couldn't run from his past forever. In 2009, South Carolina and Florida authorities would discover Ed's unauthorized move. Ed was ducking the sex offender registry yet again. It's reported that his justification for this was that he feared judgment and persecution from his new South Carolinian neighbors similar to what he experienced in Florida. It's a reasonable fear to have, but it's not an excuse. The courts would allow Ed to stay in South Carolina, but he would be punished heavily for undermining the sex offender registry. Ed would be placed on an additional five years of probation by the Florida courts and was forbidden from using computers and the internet. And you know what that means, no more YouTube. And for Ed, this might as well have been a death sentence. As the internet and his hundreds of thousands of adoring YouTube fans, that's likely what was keeping Ed going in these later years of his life. He had to keep entertaining the viewers. The show must go on, he likely thought to himself. So Ed comes up with what seemed to be a foolproof plan. Instead of uploading the videos himself, he would record a video, then hand it off to a friend. This friend would then log into his YouTube channel and upload the video on Ed's behalf. Thus, technically speaking, it would be possible for Ed to still regularly upload to his YouTube channel without ever having to touch a computer. The man had single-handedly outsmarted the United States justice system. Or so he thought. The courts, who paid close attention to Ed's YouTube channel, saw these new uploads as him violating his probation. Whether he was the one uploading the videos or a friend being the one uploading the videos, they weren't having any of it. And Ed was made to come face to face with the Florida courts once again. While in court, Ed said the following, I'm frankly bewildered that I'm here. I don't think I've done anything wrong. My videos aren't immoral. I feel in my heart I did nothing wrong. Please, your honor, have mercy. My videos make people laugh. Ed pleaded with the judge to show him mercy, but the courts had apparently exhausted all goodwill with Edward Muscari. As a result of him violating probation and uploading YouTube videos, in January of 2010, Edward Muscari, at the age of 77, was sentenced to five years in prison. Shortly after being sentenced, an individual that Ed had given his login information to would upload a bulletin to the Ederim YouTube channel explaining to viewers that he was imprisoned for making YouTube videos. This obviously angered and saddened his loyal fans, with many leaving comments such as free Ederim, but no online outrage could reverse Ed's court-issued punishment. Edward Muscari would remain in prison for the rest of his life. He passed away from lung cancer on January 8th of 2012 at the age of 79. Yes, you've got to brush your dog. Well, I guess life can't be serene all the time, right? <laughs> the story of Edward Muscari, in my view, is the definition of tragic. 
While Ed did commit a heinous crime in the 1980s, he never reoffended, and I think it's fair to say that he was no real danger to society. Furthermore, his YouTube presence not only was an innocuous hobby, it brought joy to hundreds of thousands if not millions of people around the world. With his crime being 20 years in the past, it's fairly unreasonable to think that him creating videos was dangerous in any way. However, Ed was wrong to keep his dark past a secret and his repeated undermining of the sex offender registry was extremely questionable and more importantly illegal. His self-induced downward spiral is a cautionary tale that demonstrates the dangers of running from one's criminal history. While obfuscating the past may have given Ed more agency over his public image in the short term, the long arm of the law inevitably caught up to him, ending not only his YouTube career, but putting him in prison for the rest of his life. While the two individuals I discussed today may share a similar demographic, their stories are honestly vastly different. The case of Plasma Master Don is a warning to viewers, be wary of who you reward with viewership. His sweet old man persona masks the predatory pervert within, fooling hundreds of thousands of people along the way. And the case of Edward Muscari being far more tragic, and honestly, I feel sympathy for the guy. The lesson to be learned from his story is never run from your past. Ed wasn't the sum of his past mistakes, but trying to hide his criminal history led to his own demise. But that was a disturbing journey through the careers of YouTube's most controversial seniors. Let me know what you guys thought about this video down below in the comments section, and let me know who or what you want me to talk about next. I want to give a major shout out to my patrons, I appreciate you guys, wavy web surf out, peace.